Thank you so much to those of you who are joining us today. Uh, appreciate your time. My name is Deanna Crofts Palayo. I am with Cal OES. Um, we are just about to get started uh, and uh, going to talk about essentially um, kind of this these series of upcoming storms. As um, our friends uh, start to pin us, you can see who our speakers are going to be today. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Um, so essentially, you will hear from a few of us um, talking about what the state is doing to ensure that Californians are safe and ready before the storm. Uh, in particular, you'll hear first from National Weather Service. We'll hand it over to Cal OES to talk about the coordinated preparation. Then we'll go to Department of Water Resources, then uh, Department of Transportation, Cal Fire, and the California Military Department. With that, uh, we will then wrap it up with some Q&A. I will say already um, that if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A feature or in the chat. I'm happy to um, intake those and answer them all at the very end. Also would recommend that you uh, also uh, raise your hand too if you'd like to ask a, ask a question and then we will take you in that order in particular. With that, I'm going to hand it over to Robert Hart, who's a meteorologist with the National Weather Service Western Region. All right, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, well, as everyone is well aware of, we're entering a uh, quite active weather pattern across the state, not only this week, but as we head into next week as well. But primarily, I, I'm going to be briefing on what we're expecting uh, today and tomorrow with this uh, atmospheric river that is currently moving into the state. Already have rain occurring across much of the northern part of California. Um, heaviest rain today for the northern and central part of the state um, is expected now through this afternoon and into this evening. On average, we're expecting widespread two to five inches of rain, locally six inches, uh, maybe slightly higher, again, isolated locations, but on average two to five inches. The rain starts to shift south and east across Southern California later this evening and into tonight through tomorrow. So the heaviest rain for Southern California is expected uh, primarily tomorrow. On average, one to three inches for the southern part of the state, locally up to five inches across some of the southern mountains, mainly some of the higher elevations across Southern California. And for the Central Valley area, generally one to three inches, you get in the northern Sacramento Valley, could get up to about four inches of rain based on some local effects there. Uh, but all in all, much if not the entire portion of the state is expecting measurable rainfall as we head through today and tomorrow. Now on the next slide, we're going to shift more towards some of the uh, snowfall um, information. Uh, we are talking about uh, higher snows, uh, high snow uh, freezing levels is what I'm trying to say uh, for this first part of the system. Um, so freezing levels are gradually going to be lowering today and tomorrow as the storm system moves across the state. Highest snowfall for today through tomorrow uh, for the higher Sierra elevations, including the Mount Shasta area, one to three feet of snow. Again, one to three feet, mainly for the higher elevations. Across Southern California, once you get above about 7,000 feet, we're expecting anywhere up to about 18 inches, 12 to 18 inches on average. And once you're below 7,000 feet, we're generally closer to about six inches or less. Again, that's just because the freezing level is so high right now. Now, as the storm system continues to move on through those snow levels, the freezing level is gradually going to be lowering down. So snow levels by uh, tomorrow and especially Friday across the northern part of the state down to about 2,000 feet and by Thursday and Friday down to about 4,500 feet for the southern part of the state. The next slide, we're going to be talking about wind impacts. There is a lot of wind energy with this system, though not necessarily as strong of winds as some of the past storm systems we've had across the state. Uh, for northern and central California, on average, 35 to 45 mile per hour sustained winds. A gust up to about 60 miles per hour for some of the higher elevations and some of the highest elevations across northern and central California. Some of those mountain tops could briefly gust around 75 miles per hour. But again, most areas, the peak gust should be closer to 60 miles per hour or less. Again, that's mainly today and into tonight for northern and central California. By tomorrow and through Friday, 
Again, that storm system moving across the state. Southern California mountains and into the Mojave Desert could have gusts of 35 to 55 miles per hour. Again, spreading through the southern half of the state tomorrow and Friday. And we could have a little bit in the way of power outages, uh, some, some weakened trees blow down. Um, but the main impacts with this first storm system are going to be uh, really a lot of uh, impacts from the heavy rain. Again, damaging winds across the northern and central part of California may bring some pockets of tree damage and some power outages. But again, the main impact is going to be runoff from heavy rainfall. Uh, that's probably going to result in flooding of some waterways across both northern and southern California. And we're going to see some rises in the water levels along rivers, creeks, and streams. Um, if you're in a typical uh, flood-prone location, keep an eye to the water levels. Those could quickly uh, begin to rise if we get into a period of heavy rainfall. And typical low water crossings will likely become water covered at times. Talking about specific uh, river levels, again, we're going to see some rise on the rivers, especially across the northern coast and into the Sacramento River system. But even farther to the south, the San Diego River near Fashion Valley um, is kind of our, our pinpointed area for also having some higher impact areas. And of course, the heavy mountain snow will bring uh, is traditional travel impacts um, at times through late week as that snow begins to pile up. And one last slide I have, um, in addition to uh, the, the weather impacts today, tomorrow and Friday, we'll get a bit of a reprieve Saturday before the next atmospheric river begins to move into the area starting Sunday. Still a little bit of a of question as to the onset timing on Sunday, but especially the first half of next work week, are really gonna see the next storm system moving in, um, maybe continuing at times into the second half of the week. And uh, there may be you know, not as positive news for next week as next week's rainfall and snowfall could be even more impactful um, than what we're expecting over the next couple of days, especially the southern half of the state next week, um, mainly because the next storm system may be tracking just a little farther south than the current one. But even across the north next week, um, the, the next round of precipitation could provide even um, uh, significant snowfall amounts again, because the freezing level and snow level is going to be even lower. So that is the end of the report I have. Um, I will turn it back over to Cal OES. Thank you so much, Robert. Really appreciate your time. Uh, just a reminder, too, for our Spanish language media outlets, también le podemos dar una entrevista en español. Um, we are here available in Spanish as well. And with that, I will hand it over to Brian Ferguson, our Deputy Director of Crisis Communication and Public Affairs at Cal OES. Helps to be un unmuted. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us, uh, particularly to our media partners as we kind of get the word out to each of you about really the severe magnitude of, of what we face, not just this week, but over the next 10 to 14 days. Um, we view this storm as a significant threat to the safety of Californians. And what you're gonna be hearing about today from myself and all the other first responder organizations on the call is really an all in state response to protect public safety. Um, as many of you experienced and covered last year, uh, floods are one of the most dangerous disasters we have here in the state. Nationally, uh, flooding and water kills more folks than wildfires and earthquakes every year. Uh, and it's certainly something that we are very cognizant of, uh, having tragically lost more than 20 lives during the flooding that we experienced last winter and spring. Uh, as you likely saw yesterday, Governor Newsom has activated the State Operations Center here in Mather, California, to coordinate a uh, holistic and all-in state response, uh, partnering with local agencies who are on the ground in the communities, keeping folks safe, and also working very closely with our federal partners uh, as needed to bring in resources and um, activate uh, you know, support for folks on the ground as this event continues. Uh, what we are looking at is not just what's going to happen today and tomorrow, but that this is a longer duration event, that this is something that is gonna take this week into next week and maybe even the next, the following week after that. And so that is why the level of concern is high at the state level uh, is not just the localized impacts, but the duration of the impacts and the wide geographic distribution of the challenges. As you heard from the National Weather Service a moment ago, uh, the impacts extend from the North Coast 
uh, almost near the Oregon border, all the way down to San Diego uh, towards our border with, with Mexico. So, uh, and it also is going to impact uh, our coastal communities all the way up to snow impacts in our mountain communities. So this really is a broad width of California that's going to see threats over the coming week. That's why we're leaning forward. Uh, we're talking to you today in many parts to say we're actually under blue skies because we want to be early and proactive on our emergency response efforts um, and be on the front foot. Disasters are not a game where we want to play catch up. And so that's why it's important to talk to you today because we'd also like to get the word out to Californians so they can understand uh, the impacts and the important role they play in a disaster. Uh, you know, one of the things that we're concerned about is not just the rain, but the wind. There is significant opportunities for widespread power outages. Uh, we know particularly for the most vulnerable Californians, often those that rely on durable medical equipment uh, or insulin or other things that require electricity. That's something we're looking really closely at. The same thing with how do we protect um, the other vulnerable members of our communities, whether that's farm workers who work in the fields where we saw significant impacts last year, um, individuals experiencing homelessness who may be living or camping in low-lying uh, and flood-prone areas. And so there's an intensive effort underway today uh, to do outreach to those groups and to really have the state partner with locals uh, to get the word out so that we can hopefully uh, keep all Californians safe during this disaster. There are also parts of our state, particularly in San Diego, they're still recovering from a round of storms that we saw last week. So that's an acute need that we're paying close attention to of uh, the communities that may be at greater risk because they just experienced another storm. Uh, we're gonna come back at the end and kind of give you a few more pointers and areas of emphasis that we want to emphasize to Californians. But as we go through the uh, presentations today, what we hope you'll take away is that California is leaning in and being very proactive to do everything we can do to prepare for these storms on the front end. Um, and we're happy to take your questions at the end. I'm gonna throw it back to Deanna, um, but want you to know that Cal OES is a resource for you as reporters as we go forward. If there are questions you have or localized impacts, we view that as a two-way conversation. Um, and so very uh, happy and eager to answer any additional offline questions or inquiries you may have. I'm gonna throw it back to Deanna and we'll talk to you at the end. Thanks so much, Brian. Really appreciate that recap on everything that the state is doing. With that, I'm gonna hand it over to the Department of Water Resources, Deputy Director, John Pash. I thank you, Deanna. California is prepared and has resources ready. Department of Water Resources manages the State Federal Flood Operations Center, a partnership between DWR and our partners at the National Weather Service. The FOC has elevated its readiness operating under extended hours and uh, and and the California Nevada, Nevada River Forecast Center in collaboration with DWR forecast river levels at over 100 locations and it's currently a 24-hour operation producing updated forecasts every six hours throughout the duration of this storm event. Uh, the flood center is making high water notification calls to local flood managers and locations forecast to reach monitor stage and for reference when a river location reaches monitor stage, these notifications to local flood emergency managers trigger proactive monitoring of the flood system. And when a location reaches flood stage, which is higher, it triggers heightened awareness and 24-hour levee patrols. Uh, daily, the California Nevada River Forecast Center and DWR are conducting weather and hydrology briefings. These began last Friday and will again continue through the storm event. And uh, these weather and hydrology briefings are followed by reservoir coordinated operations discussions with the major water managers uh, controlling flood space in our reservoirs. Our groundwater management teams are in contact with local water managers to enable aquifer chance, aquifer, to enable aquifer recharge where opportunities present themselves. And uh, since the start of 2023, uh, DWR has conducted 39 uh, flood fight training courses to over a thousand individual members of the of state, local, and tribal emergency response uh, agencies uh, statewide, and and we've uh, really bulked up our flood fight materials, which now includes five million sandbags that have been pre, -pre, -pre positioned 
at 64 locations statewide for quick deployment if they're needed. Our flood fight specialists are, are on notice and stand ready for deployment if needed. And we've also been in contact with our federal partners at the Army Corps of Engineers, confirming their materials and resources will be available if needed. And thank you for allowing me to share this message. I'll pass it back to Cal OES. Thank you so much, Department of Water Resources. Really appreciate that overview of some of the work that you guys are doing in California. With that, I'm gonna hand it over to Caltrans, our Acting Deputy Director, Sergio Aceves. Thank you, Deanna, and good morning, everybody. Uh, first of all, I wanna thank everyone for the opportunity to talk about what Caltrans is doing. As always, I wanna emphasize that for us, our top priority is safety. We want our roads to be safe for all travelers and our workers even through the, some of the most difficult conditions. We are working with our partners and our crews across the state to quickly mobilize our fleet and personnel to be ready wherever and whenever they might be needed. This includes pre-positioning of equipment at critical locations in anticipation of flooding, slides, or snow operations. Just for everyone's awareness, we have approximately 1,200 pieces of equipment that are available for use and are being used for snow operations up and down the state, from the northern tip of the state to our southern end. In addition, uh, in case of flooding, crews are pre-positioning, uh, if needed, water pumps in flood-prone areas that we know of to make sure that and we're also making sure that our storm drain, drains are clear of debris. We also check our portable uh, backup generators, making sure they're fully fueled and functioning as well as stocking up on re retroreflective signs in case of power outages, as well as in, in case we need to sign detours due to road closures. Our traffic management centers have prepared electronic messaging, messaging to inform uh, the public of travel conditions. We will also be monitoring burn scar areas from recent wildfires for slide potentials. These are areas that may be more prone to, uh, to slide and slip outs and for those reasons, we monitor those. We also monitor our, our bridges um, at river levels uh, in case they rise and to make sure that uh, we can mitigate the increase in water flows. If needed, our crews are available to work extended shifts uh, depending on weather conditions uh, to maintain our roadway safe. We are in communication with local contractors in case we need a more robust response in case of a slide or a slip out where we, made, may, we may need a major road repairs. So we've, we've already pre-positioned um, pre our, our folks to talk to those contractors and get them, get them on board as soon as possible. I also wanna talk a little bit about important, important driving, driving tips for everybody during harsh weather conditions. Please inspect your vehicle before a trip, especially your tire pressure, windshield wipers and, and uh, tire thread. Make sure you have a fuel, um, a, a full fuel tank available before a trip, or if it's an electric vehicle, a fuel, a, a fully full uh, charged vehicle. Uh, you don't wanna be looking for, for fuel or, 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 or being low on, on fuel when you're up in the mountains, obviously. Um, recommend to always carry chains and blankets um, when you go up to the mountains. Keep your uh, cell phones fully charged. And please never go around any of our road closures or barricades. They are there for your safety. Please do not do that, as that will imperil not just you as a driver, but our crews that are out there uh, doing their work. I encourage, if you haven't done so, for everybody to download the, uh, the Caltrans Quick Map apps application to get uh, the, uh, the most up-to-date weather conditions, as well as uh, please... Um, look out for our emergency crews and first responders. Slow down when working, when driving through our work zones. Um, and also, if possible, move over when you see our flashing amber lights. Uh, that means that we're working on the side of the road for your safety. Um, it is our job to get you there in the safest way possible. And we believe that by, by following these guidelines, you and other travelers of the road will uh, have a safer um, uh, uh, Voyage. I also want to say just a few words in Spanish for our Spanish speaking uh, uh, folks. Uh, Sergio Seves con Caltrans. Quiero decirles que la seguridad de ustedes como viajeros, viajeros es nuestra priori prioridad número uno. Estamos aquí para servirles. 
Por lo tanto, tenemos más de 1,200 pedazos de equipo disponibles para remover la nieve de los caminos y asegurar que usted pueda llegar a su destino de una forma segura. Por favor de informarse con nuestra aplicación Quick Maps, también con nuestros mensajes electrónicos para que ustedes puedan informarse las condiciones de camino hacia su destino. Y por último, en su vehículo, a favor de llevar un tanque lleno de gasolina o una carga llena de electricidad, si es eléctrico, verificar su limpiavisas, presión de, de aire en sus llantas y también llevar cadenas cuando suban a las montañas. Muchas gracias. Que tengan buen día. That's all I have. Back to you, Diana. Thank you. Thank you so much, Caltrans and Sergio, um, for that overview. With that, I'm going to hand it over to Cal Fire, our Deputy Director of Communications, Nick Schuler. Uh, good morning to our media partners. I'd like to begin by expressing our gratitude for your ongoing support and ensuring that our communities remain informed, aware, and prepared for the upcoming weather event. CAL FIRE, along with our partner agencies, stand committed to providing a coordinated and rapid deployment of resources before, during, and after this weather system, just as we uh, do for all events throughout California. Over the past week, uh, CAL FIRE resources have been assisting our local government partners during the storm in San Diego County. In fact, on Monday, January 22nd, our Swift Water Rescue Team successfully rescued two individuals who were trapped as they attempted to drive their vehicle through moving water in the community of Benito. As we speak, our hand crews are actively engaged in recovery efforts, having filled more than 15,000 sandbags in hard to hit neighborhoods in Spring Valley and assisting with debris removal in and around homes. Uh, this labor intensive work is a testament to our dedication to public service, providing, providing immediate support to the families who've been impacted by these destructive uh, storms. As we prepare for the challenges ahead, California's robust master mutual aid system will likely be on display as agencies across the state support one another. A CAL FIRE has staffed additional four-wheel drive engines, swift water rescue teams, and we have five hand crews that currently are mission tasked in supporting recovery efforts in San Diego County. These resources are in addition to our daily staffing that represent a vast response capability across California. However, we also reply, or rely on the public to do their part. Today, not tomorrow, is the time to talk with your family, support your elderly neighbors, and ensure that you are prepared. Being prepared will undoubtedly save you from unimaginable grief that we've seen this past week. Have an evacuation plan, a go bag with essential medications and necessary documents. Plan for your pets. Ensure you have a full tank of gas, like as what's been said before. Do not drive through moving water. And most importantly, if you are asked to evacuate, please do so without hesitation. Uh, for additional information, we encourage folks to follow uh, our website at fire.ca.gov, as well as all of our social media content. And I point out that swift water rescue on the slide deck or images of that occurring last week. Deanna, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nick. Really appreciate um, the information from Cal Fire. Uh, with that, I'm going to hand it over to General Paoletti, Director of the Joint Staff for the California Military Department, to talk about their resources. General. Good morning. Um, the California National Guard stands ready to support the state as a state level resource through the California Office of Emergency Services. Um, we are postured very well this weekend to support any needs that the state might have, as a majority of our units are already doing their normal drill training throughout the state this weekend. So that will allow us a more rapid response um, from those units that are already drilling. And those include um, our high water vehicles or our LMTVs that you see in the picture on the right. Uh, the picture in the middle is actually from uh, last January, where we were assisting Swift Water Rescue with some of those uh, rescues in Pajaro. Um, we also have aviation search and rescue assets as well as general aviation that can respond. We have military police that can assist local jurisdictions with uh, traffic control um, during, around the flooded area. And we also have a lot of general engineering, heavy engineering equipment that can come and help with debris flows as we did in Montecito last, uh, last January and a lot of general transportation capabilities. So as always, the Guard is always ready, always there, and we stand ready to support Cal OES in responding to the state's needs. And I'll hand it back to OES. 
Thank you so much, General. Really appreciate your time and that information. With that, I'm going to hand it back over to Brian Ferguson um, to kind of wrap us up a little bit uh, to um, give us those five key tips um, that we want everyone to walk away with. Brian. Thank you, Deanna. And thank you, everyone who's who's joined today, the partners. What we'll hope you'll take away uh, as we go forward is that this really is a all-in state response that all of the essential uh, personnel, first responders are being pre-positioned. We're leaning forward early to keep folks safe. We also would like to emphasize to our media partners that the hardest thing to control in any disaster is human behavior. And so, you know, there are a few things that Californians can do now to keep themselves safe. Today truly is the day for folks to take protective steps for themselves, their families, their neighbors ahead of the storm so that we don't need all the folks on this call uh, to do rescues, to be in communities. We are here and it's our purpose to stay ready. Uh, but the more we can, you know, be thoughtful and uh, forward leaning as Californians, the more we can keep everyone safe. So first, we would like to remind everyone to sign up for alerts from their county. Um, that's the first line of defense for folks to get notifications about dangerous actions happening in their community. These alerts come from local officials on the ground, typically the sheriff or the county office of emergency services. Everyone can go to calalerts.org. That's a Cal OES maintained website where all 58 counties uh, have information on where to sign up to get emergency notifications. These are opt-in systems. So for the most part, if you want to receive alerts in a crisis, you need to sign up for them. We encourage people to do that today. Secondly, uh, we want to encourage the public to get information from trusted sources, like all the members of the media on this call, we are seeing more mis- and disinformation online with this round of storms than we've seen for almost any disaster in the past. And part of that is just our changing media environment of people watching things on TikTok and Instagram or people trying to actively um, confuse Californians and mis- and disinformation. We have both um, local folks here in the state, influencers who are well-meaning, who may post things that are not true. And then we actually have uh, bad actors, both at the state and American level and outside the country, who are trying to use disasters as a way to turn Americans and Californians against each other. So I want to encourage the public to get information from trusted sources, from law enforcement, from their local meteorologists, from the outlets like you all work for. So that's an important part of what we're doing. We also want to emphasize the wind portion of this. I want people to prepare for high winds, know that power could go out, Get that lawn furniture in today. Um, you know, anything that could fly, we want you to take that action today so it doesn't become a um, an object that could hurt folks. We also want to emphasize that travel is a big part of it. Uh, don't go up to the mountains if you can avoid it, um, particularly during the, the most intensive parts of the storm. Don't want to create a situation where Caltrans, CHP, or even the guard need to go in and uh, get people out because they tried to get up to the ski resorts. And we also want folks to take very basic steps like making sure your devices are charged, your flashlights ready. Um, together, we can get through this. Californians are resilient people. We know that we will persevere and get through these storms, but just by taking a few basic steps, uh, everyone can keep themselves and their families safe during the coming days. I'll throw it back over to Deanna and we'll start to take questions. Thanks so much, Brian. Uh, before we do that, I'll just take a moment of personal privilege to say a few things, um, say some of those tips in Spanish. Um, es sumamente importante que todos tengan los recursos necesarios durante esta tormenta, especialmente eh, tener esas alertas locales eh, para recibir la información directamente de los gobiernos locales por si hay una evacuación o algo en su área. También es importante eh, seguir eh, eh, no seguir las redes sociales a veces, pero es importante eh, tener esas conversaciones o recibir información de los medios directamente eh, para saber qué es lo que está pasando durante una tormenta y esta tormenta especialmente. También sabemos que va a haber eh, vientos muy fuertes eh, por casi todo el parte del de, de estado de California, entonces es importante que uno haga de su parte 
eh, y, y uh, no salir, no caminar su perro, no, no ir a, a caminar durante estos altos vientos porque lo que hemos visto en el pasado, eh, los árboles se nos puede caer, eh, hay algo que, que puede pasar y es como eh, desafortunadamente en el año pasado casi 20 personas murieron por estos vientos muy fuertes. Además, es importante no ir a las montañas si no es absolutamente necesario. Sabemos que va a haber nieve, viento, lluvia y, y para muchos eh, es tal vez unas vacaciones bonitas, pero el regreso eh, puede ser algo sumamente peligroso y además eh, finalmente eh, es importante consumir um, o bueno, eh, tener todos los eh, dispositivos cargados, tener tu carro uh, lleno eh, con gasolina o cargado si es eléctrico, eh, porque pudiera ser que con estos altos vientos también se nos va la electricidad. Uh, with that, I'm going to hand it over to the next slide um, and do kind of some of that Q&A. So uh, you, there's a few options here. I'll also add it into the chat. You can raise your hand to be called on, um, put your questions in the chat, or also um, send us any media inquiries if you need longer form interviews as well. If you need B-roll too, Calois has that. I do have a, a question in the chat specifically, and I'm gonna ask um, the National Weather Service to, to join us um, that, uh, you know, are there any specific localized impacts to the Bay Area that, um, that the Bay Area might see in this storm and the one next week? If um, Mr. Robert Hart can kind of speak to that, please. Yeah, so for that specific question, um, I'll probably, if you want real significant um, specifics, I'll have to refer you to the National Weather Service Forecast Office out of San Francisco. Um, but, but the main impacts in that area overall in that, that region of the state are going to be uh, the, the significant rainfall that is already starting to move um, onshore in portions of that area, followed by the wind as the storm system arrives. But for a, a neighborhood and a town city specific uh, impacts off to refer you to the weather service out of san francisco thank you so much national weather service um i also have a question maybe i'll um throw it over to brian ferguson um specifically maybe talking about what some of our federal partners are doing and um you know a mention or a nod to the army corps of engineers if you don't mind kind of talking about some of that coordination collaboration yeah, and want to emphasize that one of the reasons the governor activated the State Operations Center is to kind of increase that coordination element with our um, our federal partners, our local partners, and and those conversations are happening right now. Even prior to any sort of federal disaster declaration, when we're not there on um, that yet, we hope to not get there. Um, we work closely, whether it's with the Federal Emergency Management Agency, the Army Corps of Engineers, Department of Defense. Uh, to have conversations in real time about uh, what the resources are and particularly any federal assets. The Army Corps of Engineers in particular um, is a very important partner in terms of their role in they control many of the um, the flood control efforts in the state and many of the reservoirs that we have in California are operated federally. And so those conversations happen in real time. John and his team at the F Flood Operations Center work very closely. Um, with the federal government, the Army Corps, um, you know, and if there are any incidents or breaches on uh, waterways that are overseen by the federal government, we work hand in glove with them uh, to quickly correct that action. And so that's part of what's happening. You know, I think you may be remembering particularly what happened in uh, Pajaro and Monterey and Santa Cruz County last year. That's an Army Corps controlled levy. Um, and so there's been ongoing coordination that's happened throughout the year from last winter to now to prepare that levy for any impacts this year. Um, so I think that's a start. And, you know, as the incident evolves, we'll continue to work with, you know, any partners that are appropriate, either at the local level or federal level to ensure a um, unified response. Thank you so much. We'll keep Brian up because I think there's a few more questions um, specifically about kind of sh some of the sheltering, Brian, if you don't mind mentioning our coordination with Department of Social Services. Um, you know, I think that we've seen some shelters across the state. There's a question specifically to Fresno or Merced County as well. I know the team is rapidly taking a look um, to see uh, what shelters are available there. But uh, Brian, if you want to take that question. 
Sure. Here in the State Operations Center, there's a group led by the California Department of Social Services that works very closely with the American Red Cross and local county uh, health and human services agencies, social services agencies that facilitate sheltering during uh, any sort of disaster. We do expect that there will be shelters that open up in a number of communities over the next several days. We will uh, post those here. We do expect that those will be advertised locally as well. I'm happy to take any questions offline that are specific to those shelters, but that's an important part of the work that we do, particularly as we move individuals who uh, may be in flood prone areas out, or if there's any sort of evacuation set up by sheriffs, want those folks to have a place to go, uh, have resources available to them. Uh, we've also pre-positioned cots and blankets and emergency shelter supplies through Cal OES, our state. Uh, logistics branch has trucks that are on the road already, um, and I think we have about a hundred thousand cots and blankets that are ready to be to go all, all over the state wherever they're needed to uh, set up shelters. We hope we don't get there, but we have extensive capacity to assist with sheltering if need be. Um, uh, Brian, I'll keep you up, and then also Cal Fire, the Guard, um, DWR, any of those. Um, also want to add, but there's kind of some talk about what kind of resources are available, maybe in specific parts of the state. There was a mention specifically of Mendocino and Humboldt counties. I know that we're doing a pretty significant um, through our mutual aid system to uh, pre-position some swift water rescue uh, crews in areas that are highest risk. Do you want to kind of talk about that? And then after your answer, I'll leave it open to our partners to, to chime in as well. Yeah, every single group on this call is pre-positioning folks across the state. Uh, Cal Fire, the Guard, uh, Caltrans. So the idea is that we want state workers in communities ahead of the disaster so we can quickly get where it's needed, um, whether that's in San Diego or all the way up in Humble. And we're lucky that we have thousands of trained professionals uh, at, at Cal Fire, at the Highway Patrol, at Caltrans, at the Guard who do this work and equipment. This governor has made immense investments in recent years in emergency management. So we have as much capacity as the state has ever had as a result of hiring staff, buying equipment um, to respond to incidents like that. We often talk about it in the frame of a wildfire, but the same resources and tools that we use in terms of equipment and personnel for a wildfire apply here too. I think it might be good to have John talk a little bit about how they just do uh, river and stream monitoring and how they're kind of watching that in real time. Um, but, you know, all these folks here uh, are actively working ahead of the, the disaster to pre-position. And we're also looking at the rivers and streams. I'll turn it to John. Yeah, thank you, Brian. Yeah, as, as, you know, that far, far north part of the state, you know, the, there's still quite, quite a bit of state resources and federal resources up there. You mentioned uh, you know, all the different uh, departments and, and agencies that have a presence up there. Um, just to speak to the the flood monitoring up in that part of the state, there is a, you know, we have, our department is co-located with the National Weather Service's Eureka Weather Forecast Office. And we, we call it our Eureka Flood Center, uh, something that was instituted as a result of the major flooding back in 1964. And so we have a presence up there, uh, certainly locked in with Cal OES, uh, making sure the county emergency managers are, are, are well resourced and have the, the support they need from the state. Um, if you're looking for any particular type of stream monitoring, I, I direct you to our California Data Exchange Center, cdec.water.ca.gov. Uh, there's also, you know, you're looking at the websites for the Eureka Weather Forecast Office and USGS if you're really wanting to look at any, any kind of particular, particular gauges that are monitored up, up in that area. And so we're talking about, you know, the Eel River, Navarro River in Mendocino County. You get up into the Mad River uh, and, uh, uh, you know, it, it, when you when you start getting further further north. And so, you know, Del Norte, uh, Eureka, Mendocino counties, yeah, there's there's gauging in place and there's, there's resources in place up there as well. Thank, Thank you so John. much. Anyone else um, from our folks that maybe want to um, give a little nod. I did put that um, email that you mentioned, John, in the chat. Let me know if I got Deanne, I can just mention, uh, you know, we have a, a strong uh, emergency response presence, both in Mendocino and Humboldt on a normal basis. And if you recall last year during the weather, 
we were also tasked with our helicopters to feed cattle and horses in very remote areas. So when we're thinking about the response capabilities of the state, we're thinking even beyond uh, people and the assets of our aviation program, the guards aviation program. Um, there's a lot we can do and, and, and we are we are ready for that. Thank you so much, Nick. I see one more question in the chat, just a last call for either hands up or um, submitting questions in the chat. Uh, just uh, information on where to find kind of shelters. I'll just add that Cal OES um, tries to keep a comprehensive list daily uh, of all of the shelters that are available statewide. We uh, coordinate uh, with our local partners to open those, just like how Brian mentioned, with the Department of Social Services and the American Red Cross. And so um, whether your county has that information, your city, uh, Cal OES will also have that as well at news.caloes.ca.gov. Brian, am I missing anything there? Just want to make sure it's comprehensive. Yeah, that, that's helpful. I did get a direct message from one of our colleagues asking specifically about how we support homeless individuals during this event. And so just to speak, speak briefly on that, um, individuals who are most at risk, whether it be because English is a second language, they're experiencing homelessness, uh, they're immigrant and refugee, are disproportionately impacted by all disasters, whether that's a wildfire, a flood, an earthquake. And so a huge part of the work that we do is to support those communities and really lean in on how to keep folks safe. Um, and so we actually have established what we call a priority populations task force, which is a group of state entities that are coordinating together in real time to think through what are the actions that the state can do to protect Californians, regardless of background or how much money they have in their bank account. And so that will continue to be a priority through this response effort. Caltrans in particular is taking an outsized effort to um, the, the roadways and encampments um, that they have folks who are in the field right now, working with those folks, working with um, local government partners uh, to make sure we're getting the word out. There are many local law enforcement agencies who are actually out today uh, doing broadcast via speakers or driving through or going tent to tent in uh, either our river or stream systems that we know are going to be flooded. Uh, we have more water in our reservoirs this year than we've had last year, so there will be uh, more spillways, more gates open, which will result in more water um, into our stream systems, places like the LA River, San Jose, uh, other places where we know that there are large homeless populations that live. So that will continue to be a huge emphasis that goes forward uh, to try to not have any uh, lo unfortunate loss of life. And that will be a priority to keep folks safe. And that's really a huge part of the state's response um, and focus in this event. All right, thank you so much, Brian. I see John corrected me in the chat where to go for some of that information on their resources and whatnot. Um, and last call for questions. Again, as always, uh, you can shoot us an email, media at caloes.ca.gov. We're available um, you know, 24 hours a day, essentially, over these next um, couple of weeks. Um, to be responsive, please check out our website, news.caloes.ca.jov, where we will be putting up information on shelters, sandbags, others as well. So um, if I see no other questions, I appreciate um, all of our speakers for attending and media for taking the time um, to be with us today. Thank you so much.